hey everyone welcome back to the channel in today's video we are going to take a look at how to do image to 3d the project is called hanyuan 3d 2.0 and it is an open source 3d asset generation model it is released by tencent which can generate high resolution texture map either using a text or an image as input now this project here talks about how it can generate the high quality mesh we have two stages one it is generating the shape so the geometry that would be the mesh and then it's generating the texture that will be painted on the to the mesh now inside of comp ui that we will be exploring today we can only do the mesh generation so we can only do this first part we cannot do the texture generation yet in here we can see a quick note here that says it does support the 3d version 2 mv we'll take a look at what this mv means and it says here that it does not support the texture and material generation so here's a quick demo of what we can expect while we run this project so on the left here you can see that i have an input image and then it's generating a 3D representation of that character. So this is Luffy from One Piece. And you can see that we have the back view, even though in the image we don't have any back view. We have the left and a right view as well, even though bottom view is generated properly. So this is quite nice. Now, if we were to export it, we cannot export it in such a high resolution. So it does offer a few options to export it. And GLB, that is one of the file formats. You can also use OBJ and the other version. Then you can use an application like Blender or you can directly import it inside a game engine like the Godot game engine. Now it says here that if you were to simplify it and download it, you can select the target face number. We can go as high as we want or as low as we want. So if we set the number around 8,000 and uh, you try to export it, this is what you will get. It's basically trying to remove unnecessary polygons and just keeping the necessary triangles. And you can see that now the model itself is basically made up of triangles now this is using the demo space from hugging face and uh, it's running on the zero gpu so you will need quite a powerful gpu in order to get these result in today's video we are going to take a look at the comp ui version so here's the project page this is the main project page and if we scroll down here, we can see the different models that's available. So we have the mini series, we have the MV series, and then we have the main series. The MV series means multi-view. So you will need to supply three images. We'll need a front view, a side view. This is the left side. And then we need a back view. This way you will get the model. It is more accurate in generating the model because it has information on all three views however getting these images will be quite difficult unless you already have different views of the character the one i will be showing you today is the main series it basically take one image and then it generate the 3d representation of that character so this will be the same as the gradient application that we've seen inside of hugging face space so here's a quick demo inside of comfy ui as you can see i have an input image here and it's generating the model here we can interact with the model if you go into this little icon here you can also export it so you can download it and use it in any application like blender or a game engine taking a look at the quality that you will be getting we can see that it looks like something that was made inside of minecraft so we can see like the blocks in there individual blocks making the character and even the top the back of the character it's pretty much the same now if you have linux you can actually download the original project and try to run it on your system you just need to satisfy these the shape generation which is just the mesh that we are seeing will take about six gigabytes 
On my machine inside of Comfy UI, it takes seven gigabyte of VRAM. And this feature is not available inside of Comfy UI. But if you're running the greedy application, it says that you will need at least 16 gigabyte for shape and texture generation in total. The mini series are basically models which have less parameters. So this one is a 0 0.6 billion parameter. The MV series has 1.1 billion and then the 2 series has 1.1 billion. The difference between these two is that this MV series requires the three input images. Compared to this 2 series, it only requires one image to generate the shape. So the model that we're using today is this one here, the Hanyuan 3D DIT V2, which is for image to shape model. You can click on this download button to download it, or we can go directly inside a Comfy UI and I will show you the complete installation, downloading, and how to get the workflow. To update your Comfy UI, you can go into your Comfy UI portable folder and then go inside the update folder and then double click on update.bat. If you have a manual installation of Comfy UI, then you can do Python update.py that will run the python code you need to make sure that you are inside your virtual environment if you have one in fact this update underscore comfyui.bat this batch file will actually run this update.py file so we can see it here now once you have comfy UI up to date restart it and then go inside workflow at the top click on browse templates on this page here we are going to go inside the 3d category and then we'll select this first one the first one will require a one image as an image input and then it will generate a 3d model the other two here these ones are for the multi-view workflow this first one will take three images this one again is the same thing it's a multi-view workflow but it uses the turbo model so click on this one to load the workflow and it's going to load the workflow like this where we have only one input image now if you get a pop-up that says download model click on the download button it will download this model here the hanyuan 3d dit version 2 dot save tenses now the model name by default will be model dot save tenses just like this note here says, you will need to rename the model to this exact name in order to use it. Otherwise, when you click here, you will need to search for model.save tenses. So just to make it easier to work with the workflow and then every time that you go into workflow, browse templates and load the workflow, simply rename the model to this exact name here. There's a mistake here. Do pay attention to that we have save tenses with 2s. So make sure that when you are renaming yours, you have only save tenses with 1s. Otherwise, it's not going to show up here on this list. So if you have any issues finding your model here after downloading it, make sure that you have the correct name with 1s. Now, once the model is downloaded, and you've placed it inside of Comfy UI models checkpoints and make sure that you are renaming yours. So for reference, I'm going to show you where mine is inside of Comfy UI folder. We'll go inside the models folder inside the checkpoints folder. And then you will see this one here is mine. Make sure you have this exact name. Then come back to Comfy UI, go to the top click on edit and then select refresh node definition. The shortcut for me, it's R. Click on it here. It will tell you that the node definition was updated successfully here. Then you can make sure that it's available here. So click on the drop down, make sure that you can see the model here. Then find your input image. So you need to make sure that your character is the main focus. It can be a character, it can be a toy. The example also shows how to do for a train. In all the examples I've seen on the page, they have a white background. So for best result, make sure that your character or object 
is on a white background. Also, the input images from the example page, they all have 1024 by 1024 as the input resolution. Now, the rest you can leave it as is and then click on generate. So this will give you a model like this. Now, navigating inside this node is quite easy. You can left click on an empty space and then drag to or rotate around your model. Now, if you have a mouse, you can also use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And then if you use the right mouse, click, hold, and then drag, this will allow you to pan around. Now, this little icon here is your menu where you can select from scene, model, camera, light, and export. Under the scene, you can enable or disable the grid so this one will be for the grid next one is for background color so you can change the color behind the model if you're having difficulty seeing the model and then the last one is to import an image to use as your background next model category so in here you'll have the ability to rotate the model so click on this up direction icon and then if you select any of these options you will see that the model is going to rotate based on the x-axis y or z-axis so in here we can see that the model is rotating now next we have a material mode where we can switch from original to normal so this will be like a normal map then we have the wireframe now the wireframe we don't really see much because there are too many polygons in here so we have to zoom in and uh, now we can see the individual wires but right now as it is i don't think it's useful maybe inside of blender we can use the wireframe to get things which are in the back especially when selecting now for the camera you have the option to switch camera so we have a zoom out and uh, basically where you are zoomed in now this option will allow you to zoom in and out so if you don't have a mouse wheel you can use this to zoom in and out for light this will determine the light intensity you can increase the light intensity or decrease it to better view your model and finally we have export where you can export between glb obj and stl format now in terms of quality like i mentioned it looks like minecraft generated uh, character so we can see these blocks so let's try to understand what is happening here if we go up we are going to get this vae decode by the way this node is the most extensive on the gpu so depending on the numbers that you're going to put here you may get a speed up or a slow down and system requirements may go up or down depending on the values so the number of chunks basically means these individual blocks that you have and then the resolution here determines the size of these blocks so if we were to go down to let's say 48 and generate again now you can see that the block size is bigger so we have big blocks and the higher you go the smaller these blocks become but it's going to be more taxing on your gpu so i tried with 512 it took a little bit over two minutes to generate but it was still pixelated it was still blocky like this all right so it's completed with the 512 as the resolution so you can see that it's actually a higher resolution if i go and zoom in you can see that we still have the blocks but it's a smaller size and it's less visible when we zoom out however the quality also changes so we can see that we are losing detail especially here in the chest area if i go here you can see that we we don't even have the face that's uh, defined here there's a lot of artifacts from it so let me go back to 256 which is the default and for the 256 one we can go and try to get the same view here now this one you can see that we have a little bit more detail there is a strap on the chest area here and we can sort of make out that it's around here right and if i zoom in here we'll be able to make out the shape of the character so we can see the nose is going to be here and then uh, this would be 
the mouth and the chin here. Unfortunately, as of right now, we don't have the texture generation. Hopefully it's going to come soon and we'll get implementation inside of Comfy UI. Now, if you do have the system resources, you can always run the code itself. The project directly on your machine is going to be a radio application. The multi-view workflow works exactly the same way. You will need to download a different model. So you'll need to download the MV model and then rename it with the MV in its name. We place it in the same location and we just need to supply it with three different images. Again, it's going to do the same thing. The turbo model is a distal model, which just allows you to generate uh, faster. Now, if you can use the Grady application, you will get an output like this, especially if you have the GPU for it. And you can see that the quality for this one is quite high. And uh, you can see how well done it is. Again, I'm using the same image here and it's really well done. Now, if I zoom in, into the image you can still see the polygons these triangle all right so hopefully you have this running inside your comfy ui and let me know about the best settings if you are experimenting with it from my testing i can go to 512 as the resolution but it takes a long time my gpu makes noise as if it's like a rocket launcher temperature shoots to 80 degrees celsius so for me sweet spot would be 256 for the resolution the number of chunks i can go to 10,000. i don't see much of difference though so let me know what are the best settings for you if you are able to get similar result to the gradio application by the way if you can run the gradio application you can also try the texture generation as well. It will require the Hanyuan 3D version 2 paint model. But once you have the model, you can give that one a try. Like the GitHub page says, you will need 16 gigabytes of VRAM to test out. All right. Thank you for watching until the very end. Have a nice day. Take care. I will see you next time.